Welcome, Marco Perillo. Marco, thank you also for the book trailer. Very well done. And with all these skulls and mysteries, I think it's kind of put us in the right mood to talk about the mysteries of Naples. And maybe we don't want to do a history of Naples summarized in five minutes. It would be too ambitious. But just to give a sense of the multi-layered history of this city. Tell us something about the people that came, conquered, or were guests, uh, or immigrated uh, throughout history, just to give us a sense quickly of the different strata of history that we find in Naples. Stefano, and good evening to all. I'm very proud to be here in New York talking about uh, my birthplace, uh, Naples, and uh, the city I, I love. One of the most ancient cities in uh, Europe that influenced uh, every city in uh, Europe. Um, there is a, a phrase by Curzio Malaparte, it's an Italian writer of the past, who said, uh, what do you hope to find in Paris, in London, in uh, Venice? Uh, you will find Naples. It's a destiny of the whole Europe and the whole world to become uh, Naples. Because of the universality, of this city uh, that has uh, uh, 2,500 years of history and in which life uh, uh, is continuous uh, from the uh, start of uh, his uh, history till now. Because Naples, we say, is uh, the ancient world still alive today. So uh, we have uh, a lot of dominations uh, from the Greeks, the Romans, and the Byzantines, uh, uh, the Anduins, uh, the Swabians, uh, the Aragonese, uh, uh, the Bourbons, uh, and the Americans too, <laughs> after the Second World War. And uh, Naples, uh, like a sponge, uh, has absorbed all the moods, uh, all the cultures, uh, uh, and uh, has uh, uh, one of uh, uh, history, uh, incredible and uh, uh, very, very special, uh, unique in the world, I think. Because Naples... Marco, but wouldn't you think that in turn, all these different people that came to Naples, often as conquerors, ended up becoming all Neapolitans? Oh, I, I think so. And uh, Neapolitans uh, became uh, that people because uh, to be Neapolitan, I think, uh, is to be universal. Uh, Naples uh, is very, very similar to New York because it is more, it's a more overt city, uh, a city uh, which uh, uh, has a, a great opening toward the other people and uh, is very, very inclusive. And uh, it's a city, you know, by the sea. Uh, we have a, a great gulf uh, like a hug. Uh, in uh, for for who uh, can love it, and I show you um, uh, a lot of pictures so you can understand better what we are saying. This is the, the landscape uh, of Naples from the hill of Vomero, that's the most hill of the city, and you see uh, the city uh, behind the Mount Vesuvius, the volcano. And the fact that the city is uh, under a volcano, it's important because um, we are talking about mysteries, we are talking about mites, uh, we are talking about legends, and we are talking about uh, uh, a world we uh, cannot see. So uh, I think this derives from the volcano because the volcano is a door toward an invisible world anyway. So these are the Spanish quarters 
and most ancient quarters of the city. Why are they called Spanish quarters, Marco? Because uh, in uh, the 17th century, the Spanish troops uh, lived there and the uh, Spanish conquerors uh, decided to live in that part of the city that now it's uh, the oldest part, uh, I think, in uh, the town, uh, next to um, Piazza Plebiscito, that's the heart of, uh, the, of Naples. And uh, they are very, very, very loved by the tourists anyway. Here we are uh, in uh, the Gulf and uh, we see the Castel Nuovo, as uh, known uh, as Maschio Angioino. And uh, we see the, uh, another castle over there, over the hill of Bomero, uh, that's uh, San Telmo. Uh, it's very, very important because the city was defended by this castle. And here Before you, you proceed, see, Marco, I hope you all uh, had a chance to enter the credentials to use the Wi-Fi network of NYU. And as you might know, we're doing a Facebook Live broadcast of this. So if you want to let your friends know that you're here and that you're listening to the incredible history of Naples, thanks to Marco Perillo, please do so. Thank you. Yes. And um, Curso Malaparte said too that Naples is uh, one of the mysterious cities in the world because uh, Naples is a, a, a city uh, unlike Pompeii or Nineveh or Babylon that has never been destroyed, has never been buried. So that's why we have the life of the ancient still alive uh, uh, today. So that's why we have a, a lot of mysteries and a lot of a contradiction because uh, in Naples uh, you will find uh, the sun and the darkness you will find the uh, upper uh, city and the underground city as well. Uh, you will find the sacred and the profane in the same way. Uh, that's why Naples is, uh, has, all, uh, has a lot of contradiction, but uh, I think it's uh, unique because of Marco, this. What is this uh, neighborhood called, questo quartiere? Yes, this is uh, the quartiere of Chiaia. So that's it's a very uh, upper scale. Very upper scale of the, the that's city. That's also where my friend Maurizio Marinella has his store. Yes, The best true. ties on yeah. earth, right? Best ties are from Naples. You all have to agree with that. <laughs> that's very good by, by the sea. I, I live in uh, this quarter uh, today, and uh, uh, but my, uh, my family has the origin from the historical center. Historical center was founded by the Greek, Neapolis, that means new town, Neapolis in Greek, uh, because it was a new town built after Parthenope, that was the first uh, town uh, the Greek uh, founded after the tomb of the siren, because the mermaid Parthenope uh, was uh, disparated after uh, Ulysses uh, didn't her her and uh, her singing, and uh, she suicided, and her body uh, came uh, to the uh, Castel de Lovo, you see over there, that was a, a little island, we will see better uh, as soon as possible, and um, uh, she died, and uh, after her tomb, uh, the, the city rose. Oh, this is a... Uh, a typical <laughs> photograph uh, um, made by uh, Sergio Siano, who is uh, one of the most uh, important uh, uh, photographers of uh, Naples, and he works in uh, our newspaper uh, Il Mattino. Uh, these are the typical uh, alleyways, vicoli, uh, of the town, uh, in which you see a, a lot of poor people, but uh, uh, they live uh, with happiness, uh, uh, with a lot of problems, but uh, as you see in this picture, uh, it's very, very typical and characteristic. But this would be like a, a, what is it, a mini store where they sell only these? Yes, that's a mini store articles. who sells okay. beer, Pepsi, <laughs> water, and uh, they live uh, with this little commerce. <laughs> it's a, a mom that is feeding her, her son, yes. who, who seems quite unwilling. Yes, 
It seems like a, a, a painting of a Caravaggio. Uh, yes, that absolutely. It was in, in Naples. Absolutely. And uh, Sergio Siano is very, very good to, to do these pictures and uh, in the in life still. Oh, this is uh, our landscape, our mysterious landscape, uh, beside uh, a volcano that's a door to another world, another invisible world. You have to know that, for example, uh, uh, ancient people believed that the, uh, the reign of the darkness, the reign of death, uh, was uh, next to Lake Daverno, that's a lake uh, behind Naples, uh, near Naples, and uh, uh, in which uh, they uh, were convinced that that uh, uh, was the, the entrance to uh, the, the another world, the world of the dead. That's why Naples had, uh, uh, with um, purgatory, paradise, uh, and uh, the reign of the dead, a particular feeling, as we will see soon. So this is another alleyway with the devotion to the saints, you, you see. Uh, because uh, you have to know that Naples uh, has, uh, uh, like the uh, god Janus, uh, the Greek uh, god Janus, Roman god Janus, uh, at least two faces. And uh, it's very, very uh, complex to understand a city like Naples. Uh, uh, but if you understand it, uh, you will uh, surely love it. Uh, this is another picture of uh, Sergio, and uh, this is uh, a poor man um, uh, beside a, a church, and uh, this is uh, uh, very, very special because uh, I think uh, it's very, very like Caravaggio or uh, the other um, painters of the, the 17th centuries. This is the historical center and the church of uh, Santa Chiara. Uh, I, I was born in a, in a, in a street near this, uh, this church. Santa Chiara is the, the, the big one, right? Yes, the big one, The Gothic one, right. church with the cloister. Yes, the Gothic church uh, that was uh, uh, that rose by the, the King uh, Robert, uh, Andrew and Robert. And uh, it was very, very uh, important king, uh, very, very wise, uh, with a lot of culture and uh, a lot of, of, uh, um, of uh, writers of the past, like uh, Boccaccio, Petrarca, came to Naples uh, uh, to, to study and to show uh, their witness by this king. They are very it's, important. It's a very literary city, Naples. Yes. It's, uh, uh, Writers love it and write about it a lot. And uh, for example, what, probably the most important Italian poet of the 19th century, Leopardi, died there. And, uh, and it was probably one of the few places on earth where he was not completely unhappy. And uh, it's, it's a city that gave him some sort of uh, rest to his uh, existential unhappiness that really is the common, feature, common thread in his life. And he, yeah. he is buried in Naples, but he's, he's, even his afterlife has been tormented. And tell us something about that, because I, I find that a fascinating story. His story and the other stories of people that are not supposed to be buried in the place where they are. And it's, it's, it's a mystery in the mystery that I, I find fascinating. So Marco, tell us something about uh, Leopardi's yes. tomb, what happened to it. And yes. he's not the only one who have Leopardi. problems after death. Yes, in Leopardi, Naples. it's a mystery because uh, he came uh, to die in Naples. Uh, uh, he found uh, the, the first time a uh, relief to uh, his uh, illness, and uh, but he died anyway. Uh, we think uh, uh, because of uh, a problem of stomach mm -hmm. and uh, uh, diabetes, uh, diabetes, diabetes. But uh, it's possible that uh, he died for uh, cholera. Uh, this uh, it was a great disease uh, of the end uh, of the 19th century. That's why um, it's possible that he was not buried in Fuori Grotta, that 
was uh, an area uh, after uh, the walls of, uh, of Naples, uh, as uh, we believe, but in the cemetery of Fontanelle, that uh, we will see uh, soon, uh, that's a, a great cave uh, who preserves the bones and schools of the death by the epidemies of the past. It was a common tomb, like a tomb, yes. unmarked graves, yes. basically. Yeah. Very, very great. Uh, you will find uh, a lot of uh, schools, bones, uh, by anonymous people. And it's believed that Leopardi is uh, uh, in the midst. With all the, the other ones, yes. <laughs> with all the ones. Uh, but uh, it's only one of the mystery of the tombs uh, of Naples. Because uh, from the origin, the, the first mystery is, is uh, about the tomb of the siren that has never been discovered. And, uh, but we believe that it was a tomb of the sirens, or anyway, uh, a tomb of a woman uh, uh, that came a princess maybe Greek princess that was named Parthenope that came to Naples to die and to found uh, this city. And then we have the mystery of the tomb of Virgilius that was one of the most important poets of the Roman time. Who was born in Mantua like me yes. and died in Naples. <laughs> this was, it was considered in Naples as a magician too. There is a tradition of the medieval time and uh, we, um, we know that Virgilius uh, founded in Naples a lot of uh, ancient book about magic, about esoterism. So that's why uh, we believe uh, that he was a magician. Uh, for example, we think that he built uh, a, a tunnel uh, in uh, one night uh, by uh, the help of uh, some spirits, for example, and uh, in Naples uh, the, there were there were um, a lot of mosquitoes, for example. He invented uh, uh, mosquitoes of gold uh, that uh, draw away all the mosquitoes from the, the city, for example, or that the fishermen. Could, that could be still very useful in Mantova. But. Yeah. <laughs> The fishermen had uh, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of troubles to find fish in the sea, and uh, he painted the fish on a stone, and uh, uh, he gave the, the stone to the sea, and uh, the fishes rose up, and, uh, and this kind of legends about Virgilius. And uh, we will see another, uh, a lot of legends, uh, um, about the Prince of San Severo, that was a uh, uh, important. Do you have an image uh, of the Chapel San Severo? Yes, yes, as soon as possible. Maybe so. some of you, how many of you have seen uh, the the the, the um, Chapel San Severo with the Cristo Velato? Okay, very yeah. good. And those of you who have not seen it should see it. Very now, very masterpiece. We'll, we'll take we'll take a look at now yes. at the image. This uh, is Spacca Napoli. Uh, this is the, the main road of the ancient town that cuts the city in two, as you, uh, you see, uh, as a wound. Uh, we, we wound a uh, reach of art because uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the really center of, of the town. You, you see the church of uh, Santa Chiara, uh, Gesù Nuovo, uh, because uh, mm, we have to know that Naples, uh, as New York too, uh, has a layout, an ancient layout, like a grid. We have a longer vertical road that are called the Decumani, uh, and uh, uh, narrow roads, uh, horizontal, that are called the Cardini. Uh, so They're perpendicular, and they yes. form exactly a grid like New York. It's the, the shape of the Roman camp. Yes, yeah. over the Roman camp. And the city, the, the historical center, uh, has remained uh, uh, as it was in the past. So we, we are walking through the, 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 the streets of, of the past. So we are in Piazza del Gesù, and we see the, the church of uh, Gesù Nuovo, New Jesus, because we have uh, another church, uh, Old Jesus, uh, church by Jesuits uh, in the, of the uh, seven, uh, 16th century. And we see the particular facade of the, the city uh, with the technique of bugnato that we found uh, also in uh, Florence. Uh, you, uh, you see the, uh, 
uh, that uh, particular uh, triangles, uh, little pyramids on the facade uh, of this church with the volcanic stone uh, named Piperno in uh, Italian. Uh, it was a, uh, this church was a, a palace uh, before, the palace of uh, San Severino, one of the most important uh, families of, uh, of Naples. Uh, and um, he has a mystery because uh, uh, on uh, that little triangles uh, of stone, we have uh, some mysterious marks. Uh, we, we don't know uh, what they mean. Um, someone believed that uh, they are the marks of the ancient masons uh, to draw away the evil uh, from uh, the, the facade uh, of the, the palace. Others believe that uh, our uh, connected to some notes of music. So uh, the uh, entire facade, it's like a huge pentagram. So uh, we think that uh, there is a, a host uh, music <laughs> inside uh, uh, this, uh, this, the facade of this church, one of the first mysteries of Naples. So you see better the facade of the, the church, very, very ancient. And uh, continuing our walk in uh, Spaccanapoli, we will find this palace, uh, Palazzo Carafa della Spina, a noble palace uh, of the 17th century, uh, that is also known as uh, Palazzo of the Yettatura, of the misfortune, <laughs> because uh, we, we Napolitan are very, very superstitious. Uh, you know, we, we use the red horn as to, uh, <laughs> to protect ourselves from disease, from the volcano. Uh, we, there is the, a lot of fatalism in, in Naples. That's because we, uh, we are living in just, a particular... Hard just a little footnote to this. Uh, many of you probably are familiar with our series Parole Parole, in which we present an Italian word that is strange, old, uh, uh, impossible to translate. So last year we had here uh, a good friend with Eva Cantarella, who is the ah, major historian of, of Roman law. And uh, taking advantage of her presence, I asked Eva, why don't you do a, a word for us? And I was thinking she would do something about uh, Roman law or a legal term. And she goes, mm. I will do Yettatore. <laughs> and she wanted to talk about this mysterious figure that you also describe in, in, in your book. Yes. Uh, this aristocrat with this very, very uh, unbelievable story. And, but there are uh, historical um, proofs of his existence. And so this is the palace in which he Yes, this he is the palace born. in which we Tell lived. Tell us something. But because if, uh, if you don't mention his name, we, are, we don't run no, any no, risk, No, no, right? no, it's, it's better to don't, yeah, don't mention okay. his name. Yeah. <laughs> because this, this, uh, this noble of the uh, 18th century uh, was very, very famous uh, to take misfortune to others. So when he went to school, uh, every, uh, everyone uh, were ill, uh, for example, uh, uh, but the, the worst uh, thing he did uh, was uh, the first time he went to the theater San Carlo in uh, 1817. Uh, 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 and uh, San Carlo buried. Uh, there was a great fire uh, around San Carlo that, and uh, it had to be rebuilt. So it was the, the proof of uh, his uh, yettatura. <laughs> but this is the, the palace on the historical center. He's the, the most ancient documented yettatore. And just looking intensely at his daughter, the daughter died, and something other weird story like that, right? Yes, yes. This is uh, also uh, a novel, uh, a French novel by Théophile Gautier, Yettatura, uh, about this, uh, this character. Uh, this character. Uh, is very, very famous. Uh, and, and you have to know, talking about Eva Cantarella, that uh, our red horn uh, derives from uh, the, the penis of uh, uh, ancient Roman. We find it in Pompeii uh, yes, so to, it's a, to it's deliver from evil. a phallic symbol that phallic can be symbol. used without scandalizing anybody, and yes. therefore it was transformed into a, a horn, a little yes, red horn, red in, horn. In, in coral, right? That's in color, uh, yes, yeah. yes, it's better. That's it's, it's a, more the, important. The, the, Roman, the Roman god of, uh, of fertility, Priapus. Yes. Is, so it's all connected to that world, and, and the horn is nothing but a phallic symbol is coming from uh, Priapus that 
the Neapolitans adopted as an antidote to uh, Yella and Yettatori. So you better hold on to your red horn uh, in this it's, romantic it's, way. It's very, very, very important. I just learned papers. all these things yesterday and today by yeah. reading <laughs> Marco's book. I don't come with all this knowledge. Yes, because you have to know that in Naples are still have the ancient cults of the past, because uh, Naples absorbed all these cultures and uh, of the past uh, and mixed them uh, uh, with the Christianity. Uh, and we see it better when we see the church of uh, San Paolo in a few minutes. This is uh, Piazza San Domenico Maggiore, another main uh, place in, uh, in Naples uh, with uh, the church of uh, medieval church of uh, San Domenico, in which uh, studied the philosophy Giordano Bruno who was buried in Rome uh, in the 17th century. And um, Giordano Bruno and too. Marco, here, sorry for the interruption. Yeah. Uh, here we have a guglia, a guglia. Uh, that is very typical of Naples to have these beautiful tall monuments, normally topped by the statue of a saint now. And it's something that it's not seen in other parts of Italy. I mean, in Rome you have um, obelisks, but they, were, they came from Egypt or from other colonies and they were put up as a sign of Roman power. This is a very Neapolitan thing and it's a very Spanish thing. Because yes. in Spanish cities you find, they call them una gloria, una glorieta. In the middle of the city you have, you have these guglie with these the statues of, of saints at the top. Because it derives from the machines of the feast of the Spanish people. Uh, so when, uh, for example, uh, Neapolitans uh, came out from the, the, the plague, in this case, the plague, yes. they, yeah, the plague, yes, they uh, erupted this uh, Goya yes, to, to thank San Domenico, uh, who is believed that. Uh, so they were the originally plague. made for processions, uh, yes. these, and they were made of wood or other uh, yes, materials. They were made of wood. And then they were given a permanent. Uh, dignity with the use of marble and yes, that's right. okay. they are still uh, here. We have but you were talking about here. Giordano Bruno, sorry. Yes, no, yeah, I'm, I, I was saying that Giordano Bruno, as Virgilius, founded some books of magic and esoterism in this church, uh, books that were prohibited at time uh, at Contra Reforma, uh, you know, after Martin Lutero uh, thoughts uh, and etc. But in this part of the city, uh, it's believed that is uh, a uh, hidden uh, triangle, invisible triangle of uh, energies, because this part of the city uh, was uh, attended by Alexandrian Egyptians. Uh, that came to Naples in uh, Roman times with uh, their cults. For example, this is the statue of uh, the god Nile, the, the river Nile uh, that's figured uh, uh, with uh, uh, an old man that it's called Ocur Penapola, the body of Naples. Uh, this is because this, uh, this sculpture was found uh, without the head. Uh, it was believed it was a woman, uh, but uh, in a recent time uh, we, we found uh, the head, so this is the old uh, god of uh, Nile. And Alexandrian people believed that, that in this part of the town there were uh, some invisible doors that led to another dimension. So uh, I think the, the magic of that time uh, still remains today in this street. The proof uh, is uh, uh, this uh, uh, Greek column in uh, in the in the street. Uh, uh, so we are walking about uh, uh, among the, the the Roman and Greek monuments. And another monument. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, the the little temple dedicated to Maradona. <laughs> the, the, the football player, the great football player that uh, won two titles uh, in Naples uh, of the championship, and uh, we venerated him uh, as a god, uh, Dios, we, 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 we say. And in, uh, in this uh, little chapel uh, that uh, uh, is very, very uh, similar to the little temple we find in Pompeii, for example, um, we have uh, the miraculous uh, hair of Maradona. In, the, in this case, you see, uh, because uh, uh, this it's a, it's a little joke on the Italian. You see, it says capello. Yeah, it's hair, as Marco was pointing out. 
instead of cappella, that would be spelled with a double P and a final A, there is a chapel. So it's really a pun between hair and chapel that in Italian is capello cappella. And you have to love the fact that on top of Maradona, there is Pope Francis. Pope Francis, yes. Blessing. Blessing. Being Argentinian like Maradona, yeah. <laughs> and the colors of the Argentinian flag, if I'm not wrong, are also the colors of the Napoli soccer yes, team, right? Yes, same colors. So there's the whole combination of the sacred and the profane all together combined yeah. in this little yes. uh, patchwork of images. This is a great sample of this. Even if we had to uh, Yeah, and this uh, is uh, the famous uh, Cappella San Severo, Cappella. Ecco. <laughs> this is a real Cappella, double P, final A, and not yeah. Cappello. Eh? This is it. One of the most important monuments of the Baroque time in Naples, uh, uh, erected by the, the prince of uh, San Severo, and we say that uh, he was uh, a scientist, uh, an alchemist, but also uh, the, the, the first uh, master of uh, Freemasonry in Italy. And uh, it was very important. He was very important because a of the Freemason, one of the founders of the yes. uh, Freemasons movement in Italy. Yes, in Italy. And Marco, this, we call it a chapel, uh, but it's not really a Catholic church, is it? Yes. Do they celebrate mass here? Yes, because uh, uh, you see, we have uh, a lot of uh, tombs of the San Severo family, that is a, a very, very noble family of Naples. Uh, a very, very uh, a lot of statues uh, about the figures of the Old Testament, New Testament, Jesus. We will see, but every statue has a, a hidden significant and hidden meaning, uh, meaning. Uh, there are many uh, symbols in uh, this church uh, and uh, it's a, a very uh, init initiatory path uh, because uh, uh, it tells the the story of the the church of the, the of jesus of the saints but also the story of the freemasonry and the uh, the the story of uh, alchemy uh, in fact we see here the uh, famous veiled christ uh, a sculpture by Giuseppe San Martino uh, was uh, uh, started by Corradini and finished by San Martino in a, in a great marble, uh, you see, with this veil. And uh, in first time it was believed that the veil was attached to the body, to the marble body, by uh, uh, an um, uh, alchemic uh, uh, process, 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 yes. But uh, recent studies say, say us that uh, it's not true because uh, uh, the, uh, a document say that uh, uh, San Martino worked the marble, the veil marble as well uh, in, uh, together with the body. So it was a legend, but... Uh, but it's so unbelievable when yeah. you're close to it. That it and and really Canova wonder. loved this culture. Mm -hmm. It's a, a great masterpiece of the world. This is a, a one of the most visited places uh, in Naples. And uh, we are seeing, uh, we are talking about the, the mystery, the alchemical path. Um, and this is uh, uh, the Christ that uh, is... Uh, is that uh, he's waiting for a resurrection, but is also uh, the, uh, the alchemical material uh, purified uh, that after the nigredo, the, the death, uh, is waiting to rise up and, uh, for the resurrection. So that's a little example of uh, uh, all of the mysteries of a uh, this chapel that are uh, still studied uh, today. And Prince San Severo said we did this very uh, polyedric figure. Uh, so he was, he was a scientist, he was a, a free thinker on some level. And his studies about uh, blood circulation in particular are still... Yes, yes, in and, blood circulation. And a black legend also about his studies. Yes, right? yes, because we have uh, two anatomic machines in this chapel. I have not the, uh, the, the figure, but the... Uh, we know that uh, uh, there are 
two uh, uh, human bodies uh, in which there is the uh, procedment of uh, circula circulation uh, in, in a time um, in which circulation was not well known. And, um, but we know that San Severo studied uh, this uh, kind of things. But the and legend. He understood the difference between arteries and veins. Arteries that and veins. That was something that was not very clear at that time. Yes. And was. how did he discover that? Yeah, they discovered that. It's a scary story. No, it's, um, it's believed that he. Uh, killed the two slaves <laughs> and uh, by injecting some alchemical material in their veins and so that's why their veins became of wax uh, but we know now that uh, it was uh, only a study uh, was for uh, the good of science of the good of science yes but uh, for the for the for the time uh, it was uh, very very strange uh, it was uh, called uh, the 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 prin principe diavolo the uh, evil prince so <laughs> you know it's a very very particular figure the chapel you said is one of the most visited Monuments, museums worldwide. It has millions of visitors. Yes, there. eight millions only in this year, and uh, he's increasing. And it belongs to the heirs of the family. Yes, yes, because uh, they are uh, doing a great work in this uh, in this uh, this place, uh, uh, because uh, they they host uh, book presentations, uh, shows, uh, uh, music, and uh, it's very very alive place. Uh, um, it was not uh, so many years ago, but uh, we are very, very happy of this success uh, and uh, the success of the tourists now in Naples that are coming uh, a lot. So it's very, very important for, for us and uh, uh, for this city, one uh, of the most uh, ancient and uh, attractive. Oh, this is uh, a particular character of Naples. Uh, that's named the Pazzariello. That's uh, a particular uh, uh, actor uh, who, uh, with his uh, music, uh, uh, his uh, uh, his voice uh, uh, can uh, attract people, and uh, mainly uh, when uh, a shop inaugurates. Um, it's famous because uh, he participated in an uh, advertisement uh, by Dolce Gabbana. Uh, in recent time, uh, uh, if you see that advertisement, you see the uh, protagonists of the Game of Thrones uh, that uh, are coming in Naples and uh, uh, find uh, some particular uh, characters like this. But he basically, the, goes around the city with his drum and makes announcements. He's like a, a living commercial machine. He's, he 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 sings or, or or screams out loud that a new shop is opening and people should see it. Like he yeah. he's, he does commercials basically. Yes, this publicity. is commercial for business, but also for amusement. It's a it's a particular thing also that uh, uh, was disappearing. Uh, it was acted also by Toto, the mm -hmm. great actor of a uh, Italian actor, and uh, this is the, there is a, a scene in. Uh, the movie Loro di Napoli, the gold of Naples, uh, that uh, in which Toto uh, acts this uh, character, this figure very very important. But the the the, the, um, the really and, and right behind Pazzariello we have Pulcinella. Yes, we have Pulcinella. Tell us something about Pulcinella. Yes, is this it? is a, a particular statue uh, made by Lello Esposito, our friend Lello Esposito. Lello had an exhibit here at the Casa a few years ago, also. Yes, yes. and donated to the the city of. Uh, in Naples, and uh, uh, people uh, of the of the street believes Pulcinella as a saint. Uh, it's not the case if you see the nose of Pulcinella that uh, is uh, uh, whiter than shining, the yes. yes shining because uh, a lot of people uh, as the red horn. Uh, Touch the, the nose of Pulcinella, uh, asking protection. Uh, <laughs> it's believed that Pulcinella has a, a, a magic power uh, because uh, yes. Pulcinella, I think, it's the, uh, the main example of the universality of Naples and uh, of the contrast that lives uh, in uh, one figures because Pulcinella is black and white, uh, is uh, dead and alive, is masculine and feminine in the same time, in sacred and profane, is, uh, uh, is, it's a genius uh, uh, but, but also a fool, uh, 
uh, in this figure you, you can find uh, everything. Uh, so that's why Pulcinella is uh, the most important, most important, most important mask in the world and the uh, best known mask in the world. Uh, you know, there is a, a Pulcinella in every culture. Uh, we have a punch in England, Polichinelle yeah. in, in France, uh, Petrushka uh, in, uh, Russia. in Russia. Uh, so that's why it's a universal figure and uh, we are very, very, very proud of it. Uh, continuing our tour, we found this palace, that's uh, Palazzo Spinelli di Laurino, uh, another noble place in which is narrated a story about the ghost, a ghost of Bianca. Bianca was a young servant mm -hmm. that was walled alive in this palace uh, because they, uh, she, she gave a, a look too sexy to, toward the owner, the prince, uh, uh, Troianus Spinelli. And the landlady, uh, Donna Lorenza, uh, couldn't accept this, so that's why she buried alive Bianca. So it's, it's, uh, the legend says that uh, the, the, uh, the ghost of Bianca uh, is still <laughs> alive in this, uh, in this palace. So definitely, Naples was not this a good city for servants. Uh, no, no, it's not, not enough. Uh, you have to know uh, a, a particular thing about Naples. In Naples, uh, there were, before uh, skyscrapers in New York, the highest uh, palaces in Europe, because uh, um, it, it, was, uh, uh, it was forbidden to build palaces uh, uh, outside the walls of Naples. So that's why uh, the palaces uh, increased in uh, high. And um, um, in, in the highest floor, uh, we, we found the noble people, uh, in the midst, the, the, the merchants, and the, the lower part, uh, the servants. So the, this is a mix of a, the stratification, of a stratification of social classes. <laughs> social classes. And this is the Palazzo Spinelli of Laurino uh, uh, with uh, the staircase uh, made by Ferdinando San Felice, a great architect of the 18th century. Is a very, very much. Marcus, since our time is running out, and you are the living encyclopedia of Naples, <laughs> and, I, and I, I want to show the, the two books that Marco wrote. So this is the, the first one, Misteri e Segreti dei Quartieri di Napoli. And this is the last one that came out just recently, yes. 101 Why About the History of Naples That You Cannot Ignore, both published by Newton Compton. Uh, they're not translated into English yet. We hope that this presentation will also help uh, Marco possibly uh, finding a publisher here. Naples is such an interesting, uh, such an interesting story that uh, I'm sure many people who don't speak Italian still would love to know the mysteries. But we cannot let him go without giving a chance to you to ask the Living Encyclopedia of Naples a few questions. And before I open the floor, I have to ask uh, Luca Marfè, who is the person thanks to whom Marco is on this stage tonight, to ask a couple of questions, and he's also a Napolitan. Come, Marco. Uh, I can stay here. Now, mettiti sotto le luci, se no mi sgrida. Thank you, Stefano. Marco, benvenuto. I'm Grazie. going to say welcome uh, in, uh, in Italian. Um, um, very first question. Uh, I mean, after all of this, uh, I think I'm going to take the very first flight to go back to my hometown, Naples. Uh, but it's going to be like, uh, how did uh, all of this uh, come out? Because you're talking about histories, you're talking about traditions, you're talking about legends. So maybe books uh, are not enough, uh, I mean, uh, studying them, or what uh, have you done? What uh, have you been doing, like uh, going on the street and talk to people? Uh, how, wh where did you find all of this? Yes, I have a, a really good passion for my town because I, I was born in the historical center. Here you see uh, the, the old Roman town uh, underground, uh, our, our feet, for, for example. So uh, that's why I have this passion. But uh, I, I came out from a, a noble family, Perillo, that's a, a family of uh, barons. And uh, in my family, I have a, a lot of ancient book about the town, about the city. My ancestor worked for the King Borbone, 
and uh, that's why I uh, I feel my my roots uh, in, in this way. And uh, in my in my work uh, of of journalists, uh, I love to go around the city to. Uh, to find the the the, the why the, the the meaning of uh, every 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 stone because in Naples uh, every yes this is the very important for the season in which we are now yes the presepe the crib and uh, the nativity scene and uh, in Naples there is a sacred and profane uh, for example my my family had a, a presepe like this in uh, his collection uh, because all, all noble family uh, uh, must uh, have a, a presepe in uh, their uh, house uh, in, uh, in which the Neapolitan people is uh, represented uh, as well. Um, I think Naples is special because uh, if you go to, uh, to Rome, to Florence, uh, you will find uh, treasures easily. Uh, in Naples you have to discover, you have to be like Indiana Jones so, so that's why I went on the streets. Uh, this is San Gennaro, the, the most important saint, uh, whose blood uh, uh, liquefies three times a year. Uh, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, because there uh, is no yet a No, no, no but it's a. Uh, it's it's work. terrible if if the San Gennaro doesn't make the miracle because uh, uh, it means uh, earthquakes uh, and uh, uh, eruption of the Vesuvius uh, disease uh, and uh, it's very 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 and, sad. Um, Marco, before I leave the microphone to the to them uh, for other question, um, Stefano uh, told you that he couldn't ask you. Uh, to define Naples in uh, five minutes. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do that. I would love you to do that in uh, one uh, single word. Oh, I That's uh, <laughs> tricky. Yes, I think, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's a good friend. I, I'm still I, a journalist, so I, I got to do this. I, I think it's uh, Naples is a, a, a symbol of the world. It's a metaphor of the, the whole the world uh, because uh, uh, his culture uh, influenced by many many peoples uh, and, and many many uh, important uh, uh, people of the history so i think uh, uh, to be neapolitan means to be universal uh, as i i said and uh, it's uh, the possibility to to talk about to everyone and uh, uh, to adapt yourself uh, to uh, every aspect of the world. Uh, because in uh, our veins we have a, a mixed blood. Uh, I, I will tell you uh, a particular story about my family because uh, uh, my family Perillo, uh, it's a noble family uh, and uh, I have a genealogic tree uh, of my ancestors. Uh, till the uh, uh, 13th century, uh, in which I found my, my first ancestor that was called as me, Marco Perillo. Uh, and my, uh, my, in the symbol of my family, heraldic, uh, yeah, the court of, the court of arm, uh, uh, it's a, a figure with uh, three peers, so that's why Perillo. Pera, but Italian. Pera. Perillo, three pairs mm. in the... Yes, and um, um, when I, I went last year in uh, Ireland to Ireland, I I found uh, a symbol with three peers uh, that was related to the ancient family of a Perry uh, that was very very similar, and I uh, discovered that the Perry family uh, was a Norman family, and we know that the Normans came to Naples. So that's why also my family can have this uh, origin uh, very, very uh, far <laughs> in the... Marco, thank you for bringing uh, Napoli in this uh, very room. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very Grazie, much. Luca. Grazie, Luca. Do, do we, have, we have time for a few more questions from the audience. Again, take advantage of interviewing uh, Marco Perillo and asking him questions. Maybe you're thinking of your next trip to Naples, something you want to see, or something you have seen that have puzzled you, and you, uh, it remains a mystery. Anybody? Uh, can we have the lights in the audience, the lighthouse? Yes. Hi. Richard. I'm just curious, um, are in, in each dialect, uh, I'm, I'm saying, in each quarter, are there different dialects per quarter? 
No, no, no. We have uh, only only one one dialect, Neapolitan dialect that that, that is also a language. Yes, yeah, some as people well. would would actually because, argue. Uh, we have uh, in our language uh, uh, Greek terms uh, and uh, Spanish terms, French terms that are mixed together. It's a metaphor of the our culture. This very, very and, and uh, you you as don't you know have according to, to some definitions what the difference between a language and the dialect. It's an army. So, Neapolitan definitely, it's a language, even if it doesn't have an army. And yes. there is a literature yeah, in there Neapolitan. Is a literature. Uh, from ancient very times until today, people yes, write very, in very Neapolitan. important. And uh, also the, the tradition of music. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you think that uh, uh, one of the most important uh, 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 song uh, of Neapolitan tradition, Lo Sole Mio, uh, was uh, uh, sent in the space with Yuri Gargarin, uh, in 1961, uh, this is an example. Because you don't have to forget something, that Naples was uh, an important uh, uh, capital of a reign in the past, uh, as Paris, as London. Uh, but um, after the unification of uh, Italy in uh, 1861, uh, Naples became uh, a normal uh, city with the problems of the old capitals. So that's why it has a, a different destiny. Uh, and uh, now, uh, unfortunately, is uh, uh, known uh, because of Camorra, Mafia, and these uh, kind of things that are real. Uh, but it's only a, an aspect, a part of a, a great metropoly uh, as Naples. And to go back to Richard's question, Neapolitan dialect or the Neapolitan language is still spoken yes. uh, in daily life in, in the city. It's not yes. dying, it's not disappearing. No, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's most important, more important than Italian. Uh, because we, we talk in uh, our dialect uh, every day uh, uh, with, uh, with us, uh, between us. And uh, uh, Italian, uh, it's also a language in the school or for writing, but Neapolitan language is uh, the language we, we speak as well Let's every in day. In the central office of Il Mattino, of course you have to write your articles in Italian because that's the convention. But do you speak among journalists in dialect or in Italian? Yes, we speak in dialect. <laughs> among journalists. <laughs> that's a particular thing. That, uh, but uh, we have a... Um, it's, like a, it's, a, it's, a it's a newspaper <laughs> that is written in a foreign language. Yes, basically. in a foreign language. But uh, we, we, uh, we Neapolitan, they, we... They write very well, by the way. It's strange, Italian. but no, we Neapolitan, we, we think to be in a foreign country. Because uh, I think it's a bound unification of Italy, because we had as Neapolitans the possibility to do the unification. Uh, but our uh, King Borbone refused because of the Pope. He, he wanted to go against the Pope, and so he did uh, not uh, Francesca, go. He Francesca. didn't have the guts yes. to go against the Pope. Yes, but uh, so uh, the history went uh, in another time. But we are uh, very, very proud of uh, our language, our traditions, uh, uh, our football team as well. <laughs> <laughs> well so we that's that. why <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a social thing, not a, uh, something uh, about sport, but uh, it's a, a social issue. Yes, uh, an identity also. An identity. We had another question. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Because of course I, I, I was I was thinking a question in that direction, and we spoke, but I didn't. Yeah. So, what is the best food in Naples, Marco? Yes. Yeah, yes. You you know pizza that uh, uh, now is uh, uh, has the UNESCO heritage. Uh, have and, you heard? Uh, it's, have, it's you, very, have you all heard this news? We also published in the Casa uh, Facebook page the, the UNESCO, that is the cultural agency of the United Nations, proclaimed not pizza because it would be a bit. But pizza, the tradition of pizza making, as one of the moral and immaterial patrimonies of humankind. So it's yeah. a, it's a, it happened last it week. It's a huge achievement. And again, it's not the pizza itself, the object, but it's the what goes with it, the tradition, the, the pizza making tradition yes. of the pizzaiolo napoletano. So it also gave for the first time a universally recognized brand of Neapolitanness to pizza. But tell us something about. Pizza, Marco. Yes, pizza is very, very ancient because uh, uh, we know that uh, in uh, the Greek time, uh, 
uh, Greek people uh, cooked uh, a dish uh, that was named the Placus, that was uh, a, um, a round dish uh, made uh, of flour uh, and with vegetables, uh, and it's the ancestor of the pizza. Uh, we, we, we know that the pizza um, was born in uh, uh, the 17th century, in the 19th century, uh, rose up uh, in the whole Italy and the whole world because of the Regina Margherita, so that's Pizza Margherita, uh, because this kind of pizza was dedicated to the, to the, the, queen, the queen of Italy. Of Italy. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the recent study said that the pizza has uh, an, a very, very ancient uh, root. And, but there is not pizza, so uh, another good, good dish uh, is a ragu. Uh, for example, uh, it is made by uh, tomatoes and uh, meat, uh, and uh, it's like the the lava of the volcano. We we say uh, the ragu in uh, uh, on the fire uh, has to pepiare. We we say and uh, it has to boil. <laughs> but to boil with very small bubbles. Very with a small and very slowly. A, yes, and very it, it takes uh, yeah. I think uh, 48 hours to make a good ragu. <laughs> so write it down. You have to try it. Yes, one question there. What do the uh, Napolitani think of Elena Ferrante? Wow. Oh, Elena Ferrante. No, they, uh, she is a, a good, good uh, writer, but we know she is a mystery. Another of mystery of Naples. <laughs> because uh, uh, we, um, we, we, in, in first time, we, we thought it was Domenico Starnone writer uh, over her name. Yeah. But recent studies say that uh, he's a, uh, an, um, a good uh, uh, professor, a Neapolitan professor, uh, but uh, I don't remember her name. Uh, it has which to is, remain a mystery. Yes, it has to remain a mystery, but uh, uh, she said, no, I'm not me. Uh, <laughs> probably the question was referred to, is she well read in, in Naples? Do people read her novels in Naples? Yes, yes, yeah. they read, 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 read. And they, they, they love it. They love it. Do they like her picture of Naples? Mm. Mm, no, not so much, not so much, <laughs> but... <laughs> but I think Saviano, uh, Roberto Saviano, it's worse because uh, he talks uh, about Camorra uh, and uh, Gomorra as well. And uh, I think it's worse, so that's why Ella Ferrante is uh, more loved than Saviano, for example. But he, they have two completely different jobs. We yes, very, very completely different. But you know, the, the, the question is, is, is very interesting because, as you know, Elena Ferrante is knowing right now in the United States a great, great success uh, and that she doesn't enjoy in Italy, for example, altogether. And um, so that's a very interesting case. And of course, especially in the tetralogy, the four uh, last novels, they're all taking place in Naples, and Naples is not just randomly the city in which things happen. Naples is a protagonist of, of, of these yes. books. Yes. Uh, what about Maurizio Di Giovanni? He writes beautiful books about Napoli, and yeah. also about the cult of Napoli. Does he have books? Yes, it's a, it's a very, very friend of mine, for example, Maurizio. Maurizio De Giovanni is another yes. writer that has been mentioned. Yes, uh, he's a thriller writer. Uh, he invented uh, the character of the uh, Commissario Ricciardi. Uh, uh, in, uh, because, and um, he's a very, very Neapolitan protagonist because this uh, uh, commissario of the police uh, can solve his cases uh, by seeing ghost people. Uh, he has the ability to see ghost people. That's... Uh, a particularity, uh, as we have seen in Nap Naples, and uh, he can pry, he can uh, solve his cases. But uh, uh, the the writing of uh, Maurizio is very very good, so that's why uh, it's uh, now it's one of the most loved uh, writers in Italy too. He had uh, a great great success. Thank you. This is all the time. I know you would like to keep asking him questions for other two hours, but this is all the time we have. Thank you very much to Marco Perillo again. Thank, thank you, you to Luca. Thank you to you. I showed you, I showed you the books. Uh, you can get them online if you're interested, and if you know any publisher, tell them to publish them in English, because I think there would be a market for all the people in love with Naples, maybe also on the 
uh, lines of uh, Elena Ferrante's on riding the wave of Elena Ferrante's success that are interested in knowing more about the real history of Naples and all the mysteries that are still unveiled. Um, and without further ado, we'll now show you the short uh, films that have been selected by the jury of our uh, grad students from the Napoli Film Festival. Just a little mention, just a footnote, to say that Naples is not only these mysteries, these secrets, these antique stories, these, these myths of uh, ancient, Greek and, ancient Greece and Rome, but it's a very lively city from a cultural standpoint. The Napoli Film Festival has been doing a great job in bringing to Naples some of the major uh, filmmakers and films from truly all over the world. Uh, but last year we had a, just a brief showcase of uh, Cinema Arte, that is this uh, festival of cinema about contemporary art. That's something that only Naples they have and so many other things that are going on right now that really put Naples on the cultural map of the world as one of the major destinations if you're interested in culture and the arts. And again, and not only in the history, not only in the past, but in what is going on right now. So thank you again to Marco Perillo for what he has done. Thank you and to you. And enjoy the screening. Thank you. Thank you.